the Beatles and Can't Buy Me Love. And that was the first record ever played on Radio Caroline in its first transmission on Easter Sunday, 1964. And as I said at the beginning of the programme, we're going to dedicate a little bit of time tonight on Radio Graffiti to that very ship, Radio Caroline. As you know, the Mi Amigo went down last Thursday morning. And Declan Meehan was passing by on his way to the Nightingale studio, heard me mentioning that we'd be dedicating some time uh, to the subject. So he said, can I come in and talk about it and listen? And I said, of course, you're very welcome, Declan. And you are. And you did. You said it like that. And you're very Thank welcome. You, and also, something that I know will please Declan and an awful lot of other people, uh, that voice that closes down Radio Luxembourg now every night, or every AM, I should say, uh, Mr. Bob Stewart is on the line, I hope. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Bob. Hi. Good to talk to you. It's great to talk to you. The only thing that we're both afraid of here is that we're going to sound like a couple of altar, boy, altar boys or contraltos <laughs> or something with baby Bob on the other <laughs> end of the line. <laughs> so try not to sound too deep, please. Okay. Bob, the reason uh, we rang you is that we just want to get some sort of, well, reactions, first of all, to how you felt when you, when you got the news of the Mi Amigo going down. To tell you the honest truth, Jimmy, I didn't even know it was still going. I thought that it had stopped uh, a couple of years ago, and I was quite surprised to find that it was still on the air. Well, then, let's go back even further, then, to when you were actually on board, Caroline, and maybe you could tell us some of your earlier memories. Well, the very first memory that I have is of going out to the Mi Amigo itself, uh, Radio Caroline South, um, and being put on the air within three hours of uh, stepping on board. They didn't give me time to be afraid. They said, oh, by the way, this is a studio, and uh, uh, this is... Uh, uh, um, I forget the guy's name. They used to call him the child scientist. He was an engineer. And they introduced me to him, and they said, uh, and by the way, you're on the air in uh, 15 minutes' time. And where were you coming from, Bob? I mean, were you a club DJ, or what was your background? Yes, I was. Um, there was a friend of mine in Liverpool by the name of Pete Best, who was the drummer for the Beatles before Ringo. And he had put my name forward in the, in the clubs. And I'd phoned up to say, no, I didn't want it. Well, not that I didn't want it, but I had no experience. I didn't know how or anything else. And I didn't actually get that far because the fellow who was offering the job uh, said, listen, if you sound live as you sound on the phone, you've got the job. So with no experience, I thought if somebody's going to be as dumb as this to pay me money for this kind of thing, then uh, it's about time I took it on. Okay, Bob, uh, have a listen to this and see, do you remember it? <laughs> And who were your colleagues at that time, Bob? Uh, when I was on, well, I was there for nearly three years. Uh, some of the names I'm sure people will remember. And the breakfast show was Jerry Layton, uh, your super duper man. Uh, <laughs> Don Allen was... Uh, Daffy Don? Daffy Don was coming on strong. There was another fellow from Liverpool, Micah Hearn, who's over in Australia now. He's doing very well over there. Tom Lodge was there when I first came. Um, uh, some of the very early names left very shortly after I arrived. They, they did a big swap around of staff. And uh, then we started getting uh, newer names in. Tony Prince arrived uh, from the States. There was Big Jim Murphy, Murph the Surf. Um, from Canada, Gordy Cruz and Mick loves it. And there was quite a few names, huh? What about the lovely Tony Blackburn? Was he there in that period? Well, now, you, this is where we're getting uh, different, you see, on account of the fact that Tony Blackburn was on the South ship, and I started on the South and then came up North. And the ship which the, the people in Ireland will remember would be the North ship, which was not the one that went down Thursday. Surprise, surprise. Right. Well, what about conditions? Uh, I mean, sometimes it's difficult enough to, to run a show when you're, when you're actually static sitting in a studio and you, your grams can act up. But, I mean, what's it like sitting there in a rough sea? It was great fun because the, the, the chair that you sat in was on casters. The microphone was swinging from a chain. And if the ship rolled, you really had uh, uh, fun and games trying to be in front of the microphone. Um, numerous other little things. We were good with uh, records and turntables up until about four, six gale and at that point the turntables which we had which are american gates turntables they had the pickup arm balanced in in a hydraulic fluid and at uh, four six the, the pickup would start sliding around over the the record on the turntable and so we we had our austrian engineers 
do a little uh, jiggery pokery there. They took the hydraulic fluid out, replaced it with treacle, and that was good for another uh, little bit of gale force up to force eight. And at that point, we had to go on to tape. Exciting times. Well, I'm going to uh, have a little baby Bob bash right now, and I'm going to lay this cart on you. Have a listen to this. Radio, let's go, go. From the north of England, you're in line with the Go Go Boys of Caroline. <laughs> do they mean anything to you now, Bob? Or <laughs> I mean, do you, do you have those in your collection still? Uh, Jimmy, I don't have a collection. I'd love to have a copy of them. Uh, did on the first one, did I say the Go-Go Boys? The Go-Go Boys, yeah, the Go-Go Boys of Caroline. That sounds very... Uh, Dodgy. <laughs> it seems like a nice boy, yeah. It does, excuse me. I'm having... <laughs> <coughs> That's that old weather over there in Luxembourg. Oh, excuse me, I'm having the first cigarette of the morning. Uh, the first of about a hundred. Um, <laughs> the Go-Go Boys, I, I, I think I could live without that these days. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one, which uh, was Daffy, Daffy Don Allen's uh, uh, introduction, was done by a Dutch seaman who was drunk out of his head at the time. Uh, and he couldn't say Daffy Don Allen. He used to always call him Daffy Donny Alley. Uh, there, there used to be some very fun times on board the ship, and uh, we would always have tape recorders going to try and catch the captain laughing or, uh, you know, whatever it was that was going on board, and then these would be integrated into jingles and experiences and Lord knows what that went on the air. And it was a terrific time for, um, for natural fun because uh, with the, the management being away in London, uh, it was it was a little difficult for them to stomp all over you if you did step out of line, and consequently it was a great proving ground. You could commit all sorts of mortal sins on the radio uh, and get away with it a lot more easily than you would have been able to anywhere else. Well, Bob, as I mentioned, my colleague uh, and friend Declan Mean is here with me, and he's a great fan of Caroline and a great admirer of yours. And besides looking for a job on Luxembourg, I know he has a few questions to ask. <laughs> I was just wondering, actually, Bob, and good evening to you, about some of the pranks that uh, used to happen on board Caroline. Uh, on, from our side of the radio, we used to hear maybe Tony Prince or, or whatever mentioning them. Uh, could you tell us something about those? Oh, pranks. By golly, there was pranks every day. Um, a, a favorite one was, of course, we worked shift work, and uh, people would be sleeping at all sorts of various hours. Uh, being a ship, it had portholes, it had uh, hose pipes, it had fish floating around. And it, it wasn't a big ship. I mean, you could stand on deck and with a, a, a lengthy piece of string and a dead fish on the end, you could manage to get it through somebody's porthole and, <laughs> and wake him up in a bright and breezy manner with a, a, a fresh fish in the face that way. Uh, anything to amuse yourself, because in a two-week period, it could get boring unless you did something like that, you know. We did all but kill each other. <laughs> yeah. Actually, looking back on it, Bob, um, going to school at the time, we heard rumours about the swinging London, and, of course, we knew the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, and Tamla Motown was breaking as well. But uh, turning on the radio, we were sort of confronted with um, BBC and RTE in a similar position, just having, say, uh, one or two programmes a week as pop music. Uh, uh, terrific, actually, to switch on the radio and get all-day music. Yes, this... In, in that respect, Caroline had a major influence on the, the uh, listening patterns in the United Kingdom. Uh, RTE, I'm not sure about their programming hours for pop music at that time. And very similar to the BBC at that time. Was it? It was a very limited format mm -hmm. in, that, in that case. And, uh, of, of course, Caroline was based on the American system of top 40, non-stop music. Um, uh, the, the result being, of course, Radio 1 for... Uh, the BBC, and I think Radio Aaron came across with something. As far as Radio Luxembourg was concerned, they actually did a major change around because uh, way back in those days, we, we had uh, sponsored 15-minute and half-hour and one-hour programs, and the disc jockeys were based in London, recorded these and sent them out on tape. The result of Caroline was that they did away with those programs, uh, changed the format to spot advertising, and based the disc jockeys live in Luxembourg. And that actually happened in 1967, but as a result of pirate radio. Bob, we're going to have another little uh, memory on car, so okay. hold on for this one. Presenting, Presenting Caroline's Men, Men of a New, new Breed. Music. That's the 
Jerry Super Layton. Daffy Don Allen. Baby Bob Stewart. Nick loves it. Tony the Prince. Jerry King. They're Caroline's men of a new breed. The men who make radio active. Music. That's our middle name. What about those men of a new breed, Bob? Are you still in contact with them? Uh, funnily, funnily enough, uh, I, I played a game on Gordy Cruz. Well, Tony Prince, as you know, is program director for Radio Luxembourg now. Right, yeah. Um, Gordy Cruz, about 1972, I'd never spoken to him. And I, I used to, on Radio Caroline, so, oh, I used to tease him by saying, I bet you're a real goofy little kid, weren't you? And I thought one night in 1972, I'd got nothing to do, and I thought I'll try and trace down some of these boys. And I started with Gordy, who was possibly the nicest person I've ever met. Is a hell of a nice guy. And uh, I knew where he was uh, originating from in Canada prior to coming to Caroline. And so I got on the international telephone directory system, and I eventually, uh, after about five phone calls to Canada, traced him down to a radio station. And my intention was, uh, he not knowing that I was going to call, uh, simply to get him on the phone and say, I bet you was a real goofy little kid, wasn't you? And see what his reaction was, you know? And eventually I did get him. He was in Vic uh, Victoria, British Columbia. And he answered the phone and said, uh, Gordy Cruz or Radio CK, whatever it was. And I said, uh, Mr. Cruz. And that was as far as I got. He said, Christ almighty, was that Bob Stewart? So he shot me down in flames in that respect. Right. Well, uh, Bob, uh, just to get back to the, the Caroline colleagues of yours, I, I think it's true to say that they're nearly all in broadcasting still anyway, aren't they? spent most of the time had a smaller turnover of disc jockeys in the south the south ship in three years went through over 200 disc jockeys so i wouldn't even like to try and start on them but uh if i go through the names that i can remember keith skews which was uh radio caroline scout south is now with radio hallam uh tony blackburn of course we know uh tony prince is with luxembourg mick loves it is with a station in canada mike ahern is in australia and doing very well Graham Webb went from strength to strength. He came to Caroline from Australia, and the last that I heard of him, he had a, a national syndicated Australian TV show and was, in fact, on two-way family favorites from time to time. Um, uh, Jerry Layton, nobody ever heard of him. After he left Caroline, he opened up an antique shop in Southampton, and that was, uh, oh, a long, long time ago, 1967, never to be heard of again. Tom Lodge in Canada, uh, helping to rehabilitate uh, drug addicts, as was Gordy Cruz. Uh, Gordy, in fact, opened a home for uh, problem children. Um, who else have we got there now? Let's see, Don Allen was with Manx Radio on the Isle of Man up until about four years ago. I understand he's now back in Canada. Um, and that is as far as I can recall on immediate names. Well, you say there was a big turnover, but I think everybody in Ireland and in Britain wanted on, didn't they? I'm sure you were, you, millions of letters, everybody wanted to get on and oh, join sure, the adventure, yeah. really. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got another memory on tape for you, Bob, so have a listen to this. Okay. Now, tonight I'm feeling a little bit nervous. I've got to admit it, I really am feeling a wee bit nervous because um, all of a sudden, around about five past three this afternoon, it hit me like a ton of bricks or like 15 million people. And uh, I just realized, I thought, well, oddly enough, um, we appear to have doubled our audience this afternoon because we are now the one and only. And a uh, long time ago, that's the way the situation was. <laughs> that's the way the situation was. So, I mean, I'm nervous. I'm stumbling over words already. Uh, uh, but I'd like to say welcome. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Caroline. And uh, we'll try and love you just a little bit more. Eight minutes now before 11 o'clock. Come on now. Where are we? Okay, baby Bobby, it's quiz time. Who was that and what was the occasion? 